Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this uh, new lecture. In the previous lecture, we have, have introduced you about the electrical transmission network, uh, fundamental requirements of the power system, uh, different limit uh, limits on which power system may operate, and relate to importance of the controllable parameters and the need of facts. So, so we saw how, how to change any parameter to have a control whether on real power or reactive power, sometimes independently, sometimes they may be controlled simultaneously. Now, for the small values of delta, as we know from the fourth flow uh, equations, this QR will be equal to VR by X, Vs minus VR. Uh, this Vs minus Vr can be taken as delta V, that means it is equal to Vr by x. For these two constant values, Qr is proportional to which change in voltage. As I have already said to you, that uh, the reactive power is dependent upon the change in the voltage from the two ends, that is the sending and receiving end. Or it power flows from higher voltage to lower voltage and similarly real power flows from higher or we can say leading voltage to the lagging voltage this is also the indication of the same so reactive power de demand actually is the voltage difference between the sending and, and the receiving end. it tells you how much uh, when the reactive power demand is there how much voltage difference it will result it to result so sometimes we can say that conversely that delta v that is the change in the voltage will be proportional to the reactive power demand more the reactive power demand more will be the difference in the voltage from sending it to receiving it so as you know that the reactive power is not a useful power so there are various limitations of this reactive power or we can say these are disadvantages so for same amount of real power it requires higher current and higher current means higher losses and there are the chances which may it may reach the thermal limit and if we try to minimize these things we have to uh, increase the cross section of the conductor to have we cannot have any control on the higher current but we can reduce the losses by having the higher cross section area of the conductor therefore thereby reducing its resistance and losses will reduce and the conductor may not reach to its thermal limit but it will result in the higher cost so as from this equation higher the rate to power higher will be the voltage difference or we can say receiving voltage will, will be decreased it may result in the voltage instability so when that happens when the voltage goes beyond certain limit it may result in the voltage collapse as well <clears throat> that means as load increases the voltage will go on decreasing very fast and in that case we don't have the control of this voltage and it will reduce to a very low value where we cannot have any kind of load that can be uh, taken so usually q is required uh, in motors transformers smps etc these are required to run them otherwise they will not perform satisfactorily now let us discuss about the power flow of the long transmission line in this case it is similar to that we have done earlier but here we haven't neglected the capacitance we have to include the capacitance as well so here we're assuming again the same thing that is the lossless transmission line that means r is equal to zero g is equal to zero but x as in the previous case is non-zero and here c also is not non-zero so we are assuming this to be a two machine model that means here we have a generating source here we have a generator and we are making this vs is equal to vr the magnitude is same a force by two respective sources let a be the total length of the transmission line x is the distance from the sending end at which we may calculate first what will be the voltage in current and then we can extend it from uh, sending end to receiving end so z is equal to j into x and y is equal to j omega c assuming that r is equal to 0 and g is equal to 0 so i am taking one small element over here from this and this is the 
series impedance z and this is the shunt minus y i have actually it is not j over here because j i have taken inside this jx so z is equal to jx here it will be z it will be y <coughs> so in this case this is the voltage at its <coughs> right side that means at this point and this is the voltage at its <coughs> left side towards the sending end so this voltage will be equal to this voltage plus this voltage drop i and i have uh, named this as delta v and similarly this current will be equal to this current that is the receiving end side current plus this current so this will be equal to i plus delta i so you can see from here this delta v is nothing but the voltage drop across this impedance so it will be equal to i z into dx and this z is actually the impedance per meter or per unit length so to calculate the total impedance of this since this the length of this element is delta x so total impedance series impedance of this uh, elemental length of the transmission line will be z into delta x so i have perhaps forgot to tell you that this z is not the total impedance of the line this is the impedance per unit length this is the admittance per unit length similarly delta i is equal to voltage multiplied by its admittance that is voltage into y where again y is the per unit length admittance per unit length we have to multiply the length to get the actual admittance of this unit uh, this differential element of transmission length transmission line so this delta i is equal to v y into delta x so i will divide both sides by delta x that means delta v by delta x is equal to i into z similarly delta i by delta x is equal to v into y on limiting cases well delta x is very small this will be equal to d by dx is equal to i into z and d by dx is equal to v into y <coughs> when we differentiate both equations with respect to that is this equation and this equation so del square v uh, d, uh, d square v by dx square will be equal to z into d by dx putting the value of d by dx is equal to v into y so it will be equal to v y z so actually this equation has to be in terms of voltage because we are only concerned with the voltage and these y and z are constants that's why we replace this i term in terms of this voltage and we get this equation it's the second order differential equation homogeneous equation because there is no force function so its auxiliary equation will be equal to d square minus y z is equal to zero similarly this is the second order differential equation of current in terms of uh, sorry in terms of current with respect to x so this can be done for this that is del square i by del x square is equal to y into d, dv by dx and d by dx is equal to i z to be equal to d square i by dx square minus y z into i both of them uh, will have the same characteristic equation and their roots will be equal to square root of plus minus y z so you can calculate this and find out its complementary function there will be no particular integral of uh, these equations and then at boundary condition you can get its value i will not go into these details because it's a mathematics and i have perhaps uh, sh <coughs> shown in the power system first how to calculate its uh, uh, its response or we can see its solution so I'm writing that solution directly over here. So at x, v of x, at any value, that's at v of x will be equal to vs cos of beta x minus j z naught is sine of beta x. These values, that's vs and is, are the boundary condition values they are calculated in terms of boundary conditions. So similarly, ix will be equal to is cos of beta x minus j vs by z naught sine of beta x. This is the solution of the two equations that we have just derived where this said not that we haven't yet defined its square root of l by c its unit will be ohms it's the surge impedance of the line and beta that will be equal to square root of y z and put in the value of this the y and z omitting the value of j it will be actually should have in g omega root of lc uh, its magnitude that is omega root of lc will be electrical length of the line in radians per meter Sometimes in the previous, uh, um, I think in the previous semester or previous year, I have uh, power system first rather, it has been defined as a phase constant. A phase constant, it's in radians per meter. The length of the line is a kilometer, but electrical length is beta into a, that is omega root of LC into a. This is known as electrical length of the line. 
now at x is equal to a that means at the far end that is at the receiving end va is equal to vr and ia is equal to ir so i can write it as like this vr is equal to vs cos of beta i minus j that not is sine of beta i similarly ir is equal to is cos of beta i minus j vs which are not sine of beta i here the only thing that i have written that i have replaced vx by vr and ix by ir and these x are replaced by a small a so from the equation that is from this equation i will calculate is you will see that is will be equal to from this will be equal to vs cos of beta a minus vr divided by j z not sine of beta a. that is what i have written over here now as i have told you in the beginning of this topic that vs will be taken to be as a reference and this then since we are assuming that power flow will be from sending end to receiving end so if the real power flow from sending end to receiving end that means this has to be the leading this this voltage has to be leading with respect to this so there must be some angle delta but if this is leading to this vr that means or we can say in other words this is lagging to this vs that is by delta that's why i have shown it here minus delta sometimes we show if the reference is taken v, uh, as vr its angle will be zero its angle will be simply delta this is one and the same thing but slightly different <clears throat> so here vs is taken as a reference so vs will be equal to vs angle of zero it will be simply equal to vs and vr will be equal to vr at an angle of minus delta so in a rectangular form it will be equal to vr cos of delta minus j vr sine of delta so then is putting the value of this is will be equal to and i will multiply i will take this j to numerator it will be then minus j so minus j j vs cos of beta x since this is <coughs> vr cos of uh, delta this value is vr cos of delta yes minus vr cos of delta it will be because this is minus and then this will be plus j vr sine of delta so since there is g in denominator that means when i take it to the numerator it will be plus j because already minus is there in the numerator and here it is plus j and in the numerator denominator there is plus j this and this will cancel out so it comes out to be minus g vs cos of beta x plus j vr cos of delta plus vr sine of delta there is no j over here it is not a numerator so the complex power supplied by the sending and generator that is s s is equal to ps plus jqs it will be equal to ps into is star so vs is as it is because there will be no angle it can be written simply as vs so we have to take the comp complex conjugate of the is that means we have to simply uh, change the sign of the imaginary to positive sorry we have to change the sign if it is positive then we have to take it negative if it is negative then we have to take it positive you can see we have to take it positive this negative it remains as it is because we don't have to do anything with the material part so this becomes j vs cos of beta i minus j vr cos of delta divided by the not sine of beta i plus vr sine of delta so ps plus jqs i will uh, separate the real and uh, imaginary part this will be real part that is vr sine of delta into vs to the not sine of beta that is this term and then this term that is vs square cos of beta a minus vs vr cos of delta divided by z not sine of beta a so separating real and uh, this or we can say creating real and imaginary parts so real part will be ps is equal to vr vs sine of delta divided by z not sine of beta a and qs will be equal to this term that is vs square cos of beta a minus vs vr cos of delta z not sine of beta a so this is how uh, the value of a real and relative power look like when we are considering the capacitance as well since the line is lossless this ps will be equal to pr that is at the receiving end if this line is lossless there will be no power loss in the resistance of the line so whatever power is that real power is at the sending end that will be received at the receiving end but qs will not be equal to qr because l and c are not equal to zero it will be definitely different if we have to calculate them that is qr so we need to calculate first ir and we have to do the similar analysis 
to finally calculate this SR that is equal to VR into IR star. So this is one more equation. Actually, I have not derived it over here. This is the value of Vx. It is slightly different from this equation, these two equations, because these two equations are derived uh, taken origin or we can say this x is taken from the sending end but these are the two equations which i have written here directly we have derived it into power system first as i have told you so in this equation you will see that this x is the distance from the receiving end and then these the equations are derived it is derived in the similar manner you will see you will get these type of equations so finally, this VR plus IR that not divided by 2 e raised for j beta x plus VR minus IR that not divided by 2 e raised for minus j beta x. Similarly, Ix is equal to, this is the value of the voltage at any arbitrary length between the receiving and the sending and same is the case with the current. So it will be like this and VR minus IR that not divided by 2 i's that not e raised for minus j beta x. Let us say we have a load of Z0. At the receiving end, that means we are terminating the transmission line by the surge impedance of the line. So in that case, this VR will be equal to IR into Z0. So when that is the case, and one more thing, and the power that is received by this type of a resistance will be equal to VR square by Z0. When VR is equal to IR Z0, so VR is equal to IR Z0, this term will be equal to 0, this term will be equal to 0. and Vr is equal to Irz0, this will be equal to Vr plus Vr divided by 2, that is twice Vr. Uh, 2 and 2 will cancel out, it will be equal to Vr e raised power j beta x. Similarly, for this case, this will be equal to, uh, Vr will be equal to Ir into Z0, this will be Ir into Z0, it will be twice Ir into Z0. This 2Z0 and 2Z0 will be cancel out, it will be equal to Ir e raised power j beta x. So, what I mean to say is that, so Vx, that is the arbitrary voltage, will have a constant magnitude at any point between the receiving end and the sending end. Same is the case with the current. But their angles will change definitely. Their angles will change as per this equation. But you will see that their angles will change equally. That means the voltage and current, they will always be in phase with each other. At x is equal to zero, that in this case, this x is equal to zero means receiving end. This means this uh, Vr is equal to Vr, low angle, Ir is equal to Ir, with low angle. And then when uh, x increases, this angle increases. You can see it since this part is the same for this case, they have the same angle. That means they are in phase. There will be no phase difference between voltage and current at any respective points. So at receiving end, this Vs is equal to Vr angle of beta A, Is is equal to Ir angle of beta A. And there also you will see that the power factor between uh, sending and receiving is 1 unity power factor so what is the conclusion this lossless line considered here exhibits ideal power transfer characteristics at a surge impedance loading at which the power transmitted power at which the power, uh, transmitted power is now vr v square by z0 you can see from here the power transmitted will be vr square by z0 so at natural loading this is actually the second name of the surge impedance loading when we terminate the transmission line by Z0, that's the surge impedance. The amplitude of the voltage and current remains constant. So that is given by this equation uh, all along the transmission line. And both V and I will be in phase all throughout, but there will be rotation of the current and voltage along the transmission line. Rotation means the angle will change. From point to point angle will change and as, uh, we know that the rotation means uh, they are rotating on the uh, 360 degree plane that's what this rotation means you can uh, it is clear it will be clear from this diagram that is the phase angle will change along the line keeping the magnitude of the voltage and current the same all uh, also voltage and current will be in phase you can see let us say this is vr since we are considering this phase to be reference vr will be uh, lagging to this vs by delta so this will be ir they will be in phase at any arbitrary value x2 we have this vx2 and ix2 you will see that this ix2 will be equal to this ir and vx2 will be equal to this vr but they are 
slightly uh, different in angle only and that angle will be equal to beta into x x2 similarly for this case similarly for this case all in, along the line these voltage phasors and current phasors will be equal in magnitude but they have some angle difference you have, we can say that this voltage phasor has rotated from vr to vs by an angle of beta a and similarly this ir phasor has rotated from this ir to il by an angle beta a. that is what the rotation means this current this circuit will behave like a resistor circuit because power factor is one at all the points current and voltage are in phase the reactive power absorbed that is the ql will be equal to reactive power supplied by the transmission line that should be qc so that because there will be some reactive power exchange between the uh, transmission line series impedance and the transmission line shunt admittance so in this case since it seems that there is no reactive power exchange actually what happens the reactive power that has to be supplied by the series inductance actually is supplied by the shunt capacitance of the transmission line so in that case this i square x is equal to v square y this is the reactive power of the series transmission series uh, inductance and this is the reactive power of the series sorry shunt capacitance so v square by i is equal to x by y or v by i that is rc which is equal to x by y that is omega l by omega c that is l by c it is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line or surge impedance of the transmission line since there is no r and g so this is very important uh, diagram it shows uh, the variation of the voltage with x from uh, sending in to receiving in. this is the sending in this is the receiving in this is the distance x from the sending in this is the case when we have a power equal to surge impedance loading so in that case you will see that the voltage from here to here is same it is not changing all along the line such type of voltage variation is known as flat voltage profile because it is flat all along the line and when power is less than p naught or we can output power is less than ps that is the surge impedance loading you can say voltage will increase increase and then decrease and comes out to be equal to the vr because we are assuming here this is for the two machine model wire at two ends the voltage are equal irrespective of the uh, loading condition of the system so in that case the voltage will increase in between and then decrease to the original value it will remain as it is this is the case when p naught is less than p yes when p naught is greater than p yes the voltage variation will be because when uh, power increases you will see that voltage will decrease and it comes out to be like this and it comes again to this vr because in this case we are assuming a two machine model where the sending and generator will always keep it equal to the vr as well but practically you will see that we have a radial type of a system where we have a generator at the sending end and we have a load at the receiving end we don't have the control at the receiving end usually so in that case when p is equal to ps that means when we have a surge impedance loading in that case <coughs> voltage variation will be like this as is uh, on, uh, in case of two machine model it will be p is equal to ps like this but when voltage sorry when the power that is consumed by the load is less than ps voltage will increase because in this case the reactive power supplied by the shunt capacitance is more as compared to the absorbed by the series capacitance series in inductance because in that case the current is very small voltage will voltage is we can say as it is so it will increase so it supplies more reactive power so voltage will increase similarly p is greater than ps in that case current is very high <coughs> so i square x that is the uh, reactive power absorbed by the series inductance is more so the capacitance are not sufficient they not provide sufficient reactive power to supply to series inductance and it results in the voltage dip this is the case when we have uh, <coughs> when we have this p is equal to greater than ps and when we have a single machine a radial system we have a source at the sending end and we have a load at the receiving end. one more thing if we have um, this p is equal to zero this p is equal this means this is a lightly loaded system if we have a no load system 
this curve will go further up like this similarly for p is equal to 0 this curve will go further up it will be like this i have not shown it over here i just want you to do it on your own so that you will understand how will it behave on the notebook so what does this mean when p is equal to ps the reactive power consumed by the reactants of the line is provided by the capacitance of the line that means the ql will be equal to in that case qc and uh, that we have just discussed that i square x is equal to v square into y when p is greater than ps the reactive power consumed by the reactance of the line is more compared to the reactive power supplied by the capacitance of the line so voltage falls in that case i square x will be greater than v square y and this is the case in that case voltage will fall because the capacitance are not providing the sufficient reactive power that is consumed by the series inductance so it results in the fall in the voltage when p is less than pa the reactive power consumed by the reactance is less than that the reactive power supplied by the capacitance so hence voltage rise here capacitance provides more reactive power as consumed by the inductance in that case this capacitance as since there's more reactive power so it will result in the voltage rise so you can see from here the voltage is affected more at the middle of the line so that the controller that facts are you usually used near the near the middle of the line this is usually the case for the two machine model not for the this uh, you can say radial system you can see from here mostly the uh, it affects mostly at the middle of the line not at uh, you can say at at the end so in that case you, uh, mostly the fax controllers are usually used at the middle of the line in case of two machine model definitely in this type of a system that they have to be installed at this point one more thing that we need to uh, understand i think I think I will stop over here. This will be too much to cover in this lecture. So I'll stop you over here. Thank you.